I'm waiting for the confirmation. Hello everyone. A very, very good evening to all of you. Am I clearly visible, audible to you guys? Okay, I guess I'm clearly visible, audible. Okay, I guess it's working. So people are still joining. Let everyone join. We will start the session. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Okay, just a second. Okay, got it, got it. So I'm clearly visible, audible. Can someone write in the comment box if I'm clearly visible, audible and you can see my PPT also? So I will start the session ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rajat Pratik. Thank you so much for confirmation. A very, very good evening to all of you. So I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here and today I am here to take a very important topic. I mean, okay, so it's decode virology. So basically in this session, I am going to take virology. I will not take individual viruses one by one. I will take general virology with important points covering of the individual viruses and general virology only. You got my point and I can challenge if you are attending today's session 70-80% of the questions of entire virology will be from this session only. I can challenge. So I will teach you a topic. You know my way of teaching. First I will let you know a topic. I will teach you a topic and after that we will solve the PYQs based on that topic also. So after this session you will master in virology and after this learning individual viruses will be fun for you. So you will have a strong foundation, a strong basics of the virology and then reading the individual viruses, all DNA and RNA viruses, it will be fun for you. You got my point? So let's start virology. Are you people ready? Can we start? Are you there? Can we go ahead? Let's start it. Right. So you can see this is the structure of the virus. Can you see the structure of the virus here? So before starting the individual viruses, let me tell you few general properties of the viruses. Viruses are the smallest obligate intracellular infective agents. These are the smallest one, number one. These are smaller than bacteria also, parasites also and fungus also. These are the smallest um, infectious organisms you can say, right? And these are obligate, obligate means strictly intracellular. They cannot replicate outside the host cell. They can replicate only inside the host cell. That's why it's obligate. Number two, they contain nucleic acid. But they contain either DNA or RNA. I have used the word or. It's not and. It's not and. It's or. And it is never both. Either DNA or RNA. But never both. We know that. They are resistant to antibiotic. Bacteria are sensitive to antibiotics. But unlike bacteria, they are resistant to antibiotics. But they are sensitive to interferons. You got it? They are sensitive to interferons. They are dependent on the host cell for replication for three reasons. There are three reasons. Number one, they do not possess any metabolic activity in, outside the host cell. Number one, they do not have ribosomes, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum or any of the cellular organization. They do not have it. They do not have any of the enzyme. No enzyme, no cellular organi organization, no ribosome, no endoplasmic reticula reticulum, no mitochondria, no metabolic activity. That's why they require a living cell for replication. When they use a living cell, which is known as host cell, which can be human, which can be animal, which can be any living cell. So they use all these things which are absent in the virus of the host cell for replication. For replication, metabolic activity, ribosome, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, enzymes, everything is required. But everything is absent in the virus. So how does the virus replicate? Virus uses all these things, the machinery, the machinery for replication of the host cell. You got it. The machinery is used from the host cell, right? So these are the general properties. I guess everyone knows it. But let's see few PYQs on the general properties also. You have to write your answer in the comment box, right? So the first question is in front of you. Very simple question. It's a baby question. I guess you all can answer it. Can you please answer it? So what is false about viruses? What is false about viruses? Ribosome absent. Is it false or true? Mitochondria absent. Is it false or true? Motility absent. Is it false or true? And nucleic acid absent, is it false or true? What is the correct answer? Can you tell me the correct answer? I'm waiting for the answer. So anyone can answer from the audience. So please, I insist you, everyone should participate. At max, you will be wrong, but at least you try. So what is the correct answer? Yes. Yes, very good. Nerd medicine, Shriya, everyone is right. The correct answer is D. 
I told you nucleic acid is always present. It can be DNA or RNA but never both. But it is always present. Either DNA or RNA but never both. So this is wrong. I mean this is false. Nucleic acid absent because nucleic acid is always present. The remaining things are absent. I agree. So correct answer is D. It's a very simple PYQ I guess. Right. Coming on the next thing. Structure of the virus. Do you see this is a virus in front of you. There are two viruses in front of you. Listen. Why I have drawn two viruses I will tell you. All viruses have nucleic acid. It can be either DNA or RNA, never both. I told you, number one. Based on which we will do the classification of viruses. Viruses are of two types, the DNA viruses and RNA viruses based on this, this nucleic acid. This nucleic acid is surrounded, it is surrounded by a protein covering. Can you see this protein covering? This protein covering is the polymer, which is made up of multiple monomer. Can you see these monomers, please? Can you please see what are these monomers? These all are monomers. These are known as capsomer. And the covering is known as capsid. So capsid is made up of capsomer. This complete covering is capsid, which is made up of monomers. The monomers are capsomers. So capsomers surround the nucleic acid. At the center, there is nucleic acid. It is surrounded by capsomer forming the capsid. These two things are present in each and every virus. The two things which are compulsorily present in all viruses, the nucleic acid core and the capsid, which is made up of capsomer. The third and the fourth thing, the third thing is the envelope. Can you see there is an envelope? Envelope sometimes present, sometimes absent, not always present. Sometimes it can be present in some viruses. So this is an enveloped virus. Enveloped virus, you can see an envelope is present around. And this is a non-enveloped virus, which is known as naked virus. The naked one is a non-enveloped, right? The naked one. So this one is a non-enveloped virus, right? And some viruses have uh, spiky projections present on it. These are known as paplomers. So also paplomers are present in some of them as some of them do not have it. So the two things which are compulsorily present in all viruses are these two. Number one nucleic acid. It can be DNA or RNA never both but it is always present. It is surrounded by capsid. Capsid is a protein covering. Envelope sometime present sometime absent. Paploma sometime present sometime absent. So that is the thing. You got it. You got it. Yes, Akash, I will provide the P, uh, PDF of this session after the session immediately only on the YouTube only. I will provide the uh, PDF to you or on the Telegram group of Cerebellum. It will be provided today only. So no need to write. Just understand the concept. Okay. So what about I told you regarding the capsid? What is capsid? Capsid is the protein covering. You can see this one. You can see this one. It is always present and made up of capsomer. And what I told you about envelope, envelope is not compulsory. Some viruses have envelope, some do not have envelope. So viruses are of two types based on envelope. Envelope viruses, non-envelope viruses. The non-envelope one are known as naked. They are known as naked viruses because they do not have envelope over them. Right. What is the nature of envelope? The capsid is protein in nature. The capsid is made up of protein, protein. It is a, 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 a polymer made up of monomer capsomer. What is envelope made up of? Envelope is lipoprotein, not protein. Mind my words. It's a PYQ. It's lipoprotein. The lipid component is derived from the host. And the protein component is the virus itself. Protein is the hai. Lipid is churaya hua hai host. Se. So it is lipoprotein. The lipid is from the host. And the protein is of virus itself. It is the virus itself. It is the hai. But lipid is not the hai. Lipid is the host. Se liya. You got it? Have you got it? Can we go ahead? Can we go ahead? That is regarding the envelope. We will solve few MCQs, PYQs based on the structure. Then we will move ahead. So again, you have to write your answer, everyone, in the comments. I'm waiting. So the question is in front of you. Which of the following is always present in the virus? Always, always present in a virus. So enzyme, always present. Envelope, always present. DNA or RNA, always present. Or all of the above, always present. So I am asking you. So, can you answer Shriya, Rajat, Boda, Vanshika, any one of you please answer it. Can you please answer it? What is the correct answer which is always present? Yes, very good, very good. Ankit, Larsani, Rajat, everyone is correct. The correct answer is DNA or RNA. So, DNA or RNA is always present as I told you. I am sorry. DNA or RNA is always present. Envelope sometime present, sometime absent. Enzymes are always absent always absent they are never present yes you all are right very good very good the next question is in front of you can you tell me what is capsid what is capsid is it extracellular infectious particle is it a protein coat around the nucleic acid in the virus is it an envelope around the virus or is it none of the above 
So the four options are in front of you. Can you tell me what is the correct answer here? It's the PYQ. Uh, two years back, it's a PYQ of NEED PG. So capsid, what is the capsid of viral structure? Can you tell me what is the correct answer? Yes, everyone is correct. Yes, yes, very good. The correct answer here is B. It's a protein covering. It's a polymer made up of monomer. The monomer is capsomer. So you can see how simple, simple questions come from the basics of the virology. Okay, one more question. After that, we will move ahead to the next topic. So not true about the viral envelope. Which of the following statement is not true? Which of the following statement is not true for the viral envelope? Can you please answer it? The lipid component is derived from the host. Is it true or false? The protein component is, is the virus itself. Lipid churaya hua hai or protein khud ka hai. Is it true or false? Both statement. It is dissolved in the solvent and it propagates in the next generation. Which of the following is false? Which of the following is false? You have to tell me the false statement. I am waiting for it. Yes, Shriya, absolutely right. The correct state answer here is D. It propagates in the next generation? No, 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 no. It do not propagates in the next generation. For anything to propagate in the next generation, it has to have a gene. Envelope don't have a gene, you know. Envelope is partly derived from the host, partly from the virus. It doesn't have a gene. So gene only transmit from one generation to another. Envelope don't transmit from one generation to another. It do not propagate through the next generation. And rest of the statements, it dissolves in the solvent. Many students are saying answer SC. It dissolves in the solvent. When you put any alcohol, any solvent, any, you know, Dettol, any, any solvent, the envelopes of the virus get dissolved. You know, the envelope, it get, this statement is true. It is true, right? It is not false. It is true. But it propagates in the next generation. This is false, right? So I hope you got it. Can we go ahead? Can we go ahead? The correct answer here is D. The correct answer here is D. So let's come on the classification of the viruses. You know, I have seen many students, they are reading virus by virus, individual viruses. They even don't know it is a DNA virus or RNA virus, right? Or they have confusion in that. 90% of the questions are from the basics in virology. You got my point. If you know the classification, I will tell you many tricks and mnemonics in the classification itself. So individual viruses are, <clears throat> the individual viruses will be covered in the classification itself. I will tell you in a unique way, I will help you in learning all the viruses with very easy, you know. So let's see. So we classify viruses based on the nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA. They never have both, no? So the viruses which have DNA as a nucleic acid are DNA viruses. The viruses which have RNA as a nucleic acid are the RNA viruses. Okay. So there are six families of the viruses having DNA. And there are 15 families of the viruses having RNA. I am saying families. These are families having many viruses. Um, uh, inside it right so first learn the name of the six dna families and first learn the name of the 15 rna families so i'm going to give you two mnemonics now one mnemonic for dna viruses six family one mnemonic for rna viruses 15 15 families you see the individual viruses inside each family and then we will discuss further okay so let's come on the classification this is the classification of the dna viruses the six families i told you there are six families so what is the mnemonic here the mnemonic is happy double H A triple P. You learn like double H, it's one A and triple P. And you can apply why. Why is not a mnemonic? So double H A triple P. Happy is the mnemonic. What are two H? One H, one H is herpes, and one H is hepadna. One H is herpes, one H is hepadna. You can see herpes. You can see how many herpes viruses are there. There are total eight types of herpes that will be individually. I will discuss one by one. Important one are these, you know. HSV1, 2, varicella zoster, EBV, CMV, there are many. CMV, HTLV, RK virus, these all are herpes. And one is hepadna. Hepadna have only one virus, hepatitis B virus. That's it, right? You can see herpes and hepadna is done. A is for adeno, very easy. A is for adeno, having only one virus inside it, adenovirus. Adenoviridae, adenovirus, only one virus. It's very easy. And triple P is very confusing. There are three P's here. And two P's in RNA viruses. Total five P are there in entire virology. So in entire virology, P is very confusing. You know. So please learn the three P here. What are the three P? One is pox virus. One is parvo. One is papova. Pox, parvo, papova. Pox, parvo, papova. So can you please help me? What are DNA viruses? How many DNA viruses families you know? You will be saying ma'am, six viruses. There are six DNA viruses. So can you please help me in writing the name? Yes, it's double H A triple P. Double H A triple P. Can you tell me the full form? One is herpes, one is hepadna. Herpes virus family having eight viruses inside it. Hepadna have only one. That is hepatitis B virus. 
एडिनोविरिडी हैव ओनली वन एडिनोवायरस देन पॉक्स पार्वो पेपोवा पॉक्स पार्वो पेपोवा यू पीपल देयर गिव मी अ थम्स अप इफ यू गॉट इट सो प्लीज लर्न दीस ऑल वायरसेस यू हैव टू लर्न द मेंबर्स आल्सो पार्वोविरिडी हैव पार्वो वायरस बी 19 ओनली वन वायरस राइट पेपोवा हैव थ्री पे पो वा द थ्री वायरसेस पे इज पेपिलोमा पो इज पोलियोमा एंड वी इज वेरिसिल सो वेरियोला दीस आर द थ्री वायरसेस पेपिलोमा पोलियोमा and uh, the third one is not found in humans it is found in animals so these are the three viruses you can see and pox viridi have important one variola vaccinia monkey pox cow pox molluscum contagiosum so these are the important members of pox viridi you have to learn the important important members there are many members but you have to learn the important which are clinically important you got my point so learn the six dna viruses coming on the rna viruses how many rna viruses you know there are 15 so what is the mnemonic First, see the mnemonic. The mnemonic is A B C D. A B C D four. F O R four. A B C D F O R four. In which there are two C. I will tell you two C. There are two F and there are three R. Right? And T P H. You can learn T P H tweet per R. You can learn P T H parathyroid hormone. Whatever you learn. So A B C D four T P H. It's a mnemonic. It's a mnemonic. In which C are two, F is two, R is three, and P is two. Count it. count they are 15 in number let me tell you the full form if you people are awakened right let me tell you now many students have confusion in the rna viruses first see the names of 15 they are in front of you so let's see the full form of a b c d a is arena b is bunia a b there are two c na corona calci the two c one is corona and one is calci corona and calci and what is d d is delta where is delta let me find it the last one delta a b c d Arena, Bunia, the two C, Calci, Corona, Coronavirus, and D is Delta. A B C D is done. Let's come on four. F O R, F O R. There are two F and three R. What are the two F? Philo and Flavi. The two F are Philo virus and Flavi virus. So one is Flavi virus and one is Philo virus. The two F. O is ortho mixo. The O is only one ortho mixo. So one O is ortho mixo, and there are three R. What are the three R? Rio, retro, rhabdo. Okay, all the three are very important, ultra important RNA viruses. The ultra, super, duper important, I must say. So, what are the three R? Can you tell me, please? What are the three R? So, one is rhabdo, one is Rio, and one is retro. Retro virus is HIV. We know. Rio virus contains rota virus, right? The important one is the rota virus, right? And rhabdo contains the rabies virus. Okay. So, R is done. Not T P H. T is Toga virus. T is Toga. P the two P again there are two P paramyxo one is paramyxo one is picorna and H is hepavirus hepavirus so count they are fifteen in number so can you help me in writing the six DNA and fifteen RNA viruses who will help me now I will see in this classification itself I will te tell you many important things about the individual viruses see how I will tell you so first thing is to know the classification which is DNA which is RNA please tell me the DNA viruses who will tell me what is the mnemonic The six DNA viruses. So, what are the six DNA viruses? Double H A triple P triple P. I guess you know the full form. Double H A triple P. Please say it out. And the fifteen RNA viruses. It's A B C D. There are two C. Okay, A B C D. Four F O R two F and three R F O R T P H tweet per R T P H. So T P H me it's two P yes count they are fifteen in number right now listen listen the most important thing I am going to tell you here can you tell me uh okay so there are three P na so one of the P is smallest DNA one of the P is largest DNA these are DNA viruses right these are DNA viruses and these are RNA viruses in the RNA also one P is smallest one P is largest. So among the DNA also smallest largest starting from PP, you know. So smallest DNA. What is the smallest DNA? It's Parvo, and largest DNA is Pox. Parvo Pox. The third one is the Papova. Papova is neither smallest nor largest. Okay, forget it. So Parvo and Papova both are P. Okay, and see the two P here. The two P. So smallest one is Picorna, Picorna, and largest one is Paramyxo, Paramyxo. Para, you know, pico. How I learn? Let me tell you. So you will get confused in the P, the four P in exam. You got the point. Smallest DNA, 
smallest RNA, largest DNA, largest RNA. This is smallest, this is largest, this is smallest, this is largest. Among the six smallest is this, largest is this. Among the 15 smallest is this, largest is this. All the four are P, 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 P. You will get confused in the exam in P. And four options are these only. You got it? So you got it or not? Parvo is the smallest DNA, Pox is the largest DNA. Picorna is the smallest RNA and Paramixo is the largest RNA. You got it? So Picorna, you know Pico, 10 to the power minus 12, Picogram, Pico. So you learn like that, it is very small, Pico, that is Picorna, that is Pico, you can learn like that. And Paramixo, Mixo ka bada bhai, Mixo, elder brother of Mixo is Paramixo, so it is the largest one, the largest one in the family. So Paramixo, you learn like that. So you will learn like this, you know, in the RNA, DNA you have to learn anyway. So please learn the four, please learn the four smallest, largest, smallest, largest in the DNA, RNA. Now let me tell you the third question, overall smallest and largest. So among these six, this is the smallest one, this is the largest one, okay. Among these 15, this is the smallest one and this is the largest one, we got it. But among the two smallest, which are the two smallest? So Parvo from this category and Picorna from this category, which is more smaller overall. My question to you, overall which is more smaller? So overall also Parvo is more smaller. So overall also the DNA virus Parvo is more smaller. And among the two larger, Pox from this family and uh, Paramixo from this category, which is more larger, which is more larger. So again overall answer is Pox virus. You got my point? You got my point? So let me tell you six questions, six answers. What are the six questions? My first listen my six question then you have to tell me six PYQs, okay? Tell me the smallest DNA, smallest DNA virus. Tell me the smallest RNA virus, smallest RNA. I will give you a hint also. Wait, wait, smallest RNA and tell me the overall smallest, overall smallest virus. Okay, these are three first three questions. Let me ask three more questions. Tell me the largest DNA, okay, largest DNA virus. Tell me largest RNA virus, okay, and tell me largest overall. Overall, so these are the six questions. I will give you a clue. Wait, wait, I will give you a clue. Wait, wait. So the clue is all the six are starting from P. Okay, this is the clue. Now, can you give me the answers? I had given you a big clue. Can you give me the answers, please? I'm waiting. The six questions, the six answers, the six PYQs. Can you give me the answers? Fast. Who will give me the answers? Yes, very good, very good. So smallest DNA is smallest DNA is Parvo. Smallest RNA is Picorna. And who is more smaller than the two? Parvo or Picorna? So Parvo is overall. Parvo only. Parvo only, the overall. And the largest DNA? Largest DNA is Pox. Largest era, para, RNA is Paramixo. And who is overall largest than this? Overall, bigger. So answer is again Paramixo. So Paramixo. So my point is that in your exam, you have to read your question very carefully. These are very simple, simple question. But you will get confused in the exam. You got it? So this is the thing we have done here. Okay, now we will see some questions and move ahead to the next topic. Okay, can you see? Can you answer this question please for me? Which is not a DNA virus? Not a DNA virus among the following. You know the six DNA viruses? It's double H, A, triple P. See which is not coming in this mnemonic. Is Parvo coming or not coming? Yes, one of the P is Parvo. Is Papova coming? Yes, one of the P is Papova. Is Pox? The third P is Pox only. But Rhabdovirus is nowhere coming here. The rhabdovirus, the rhabdovirus is coming in RNA viruses. You know the mnemonic A, B, C, D, for F, O, R, the R is rhabdo. One of the R is rhabdo. Yes, very good. The correct answer is D. But I want everyone to participate. Please write down whatever you think. Write down the answer. Okay. Okay. So can we go ahead? Can we go ahead? That's so yes. The correct answer is rhabdo. Yes. So the next, uh, yeah. One more thing I would like to tell you here. Okay. Okay, so what are the six DNA viruses? Just one more thing. So it's double H, A, triple P. I told you, no? Just a second. Double H, A, triple P. And what are the 15 RNA viruses? It's A, B, C, D, F, O, R, T, P, H. Okay, T, P, H. So I told you this thing. Okay, so why I have written this again? All DNA viruses, all DNA viruses. Just a second. All DNA. What is DNA? Single-stranded or double-stranded? Normally in human beings. In human beings, DNA is double-stranded. Right? Normally DNA is double-stranded. And what is RNA? We all know RNA is single-stranded. 
So you have to tell me the single or double stranded for this virus. These are the six DNA viruses. They all are double stranded like normal DNA, like normal DNA, except Parvo, except Parvo. Parvo is a DNA virus. It's a DNA virus, but it's single stranded. It's a repeated PYQ in your exam. Believe me, you have to learn the exception. You got it? Yes, Parvo. And all the RNA viruses are single stranded like normal RNA. They all are single stranded except one of the R that is Rio virus, which is double stranded RNA, double stranded RNA. You got my point? Say yes. If you got it, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. If you got it, you got it. Can we go ahead? Yes. So please see. So Parvo virus is a single stranded DNA. Rest all DNA are double stranded and Rio virus is a double stranded RNA. Rest all RNA are single stranded. Say yes. You get many confusing questions on this concept. The same thing is written in front of you. All DNA viruses have double stranded except Parvo, which is single stranded DNA. And all RNA viruses have single stranded RNA except Rio, which is having double stranded RNA. So the examiner may confuse you in single stranded and double stranded. The first thing examiner may confuse you in DNA and RNA viruses. If you know the classification, you will not get confused here. The second way, the examiner may try to confuse you in single stranded or double stranded, right? So this can be the concept. Let me tell you a one PYQ. Can you see this PYQ? Can you answer it? Which of the following is a single stranded DNA virus? Single stranded. Normally DNA viruses are single stranded or double stranded? DNA viruses are double stranded. But which of the following is a single stranded DNA virus? Yes, can you tell me the answer please? Can you please tell me the answer? Is it Parvo? Is it Papova? Is it Pox? Or is it Adeno? What is the correct answer? I am waiting for the correct answer. The question is very simple. Who will give the correct answer? Yes, yes, very good. Very good. Shriya? Lassini, very good. Uh, the correct answer is, the correct answer here is, it's Parvo. The correct answer is A. Very good. Everyone is correct. I'm very happy that you got the concept. The correct answer here is the Parvo virus. Very good. The next question is in front of you. Which of the following is a double stranded RNA virus? So all of the following options given are RNA only, but you have to tell me the double stranded RNA. All the RNA viruses are usually single stranded. RNA is a single stranded. Only one exception is there. Can you tell me that exception? What is that exception? What is that exception? Can you please tell me? Yes. What is the correct answer? I'm waiting for it. Yes. Very good. The correct answer here is Rio. Yes. Yes. Rio virus is the correct answer. You all are correct. Very good. So the correct answer here is the Rio virus. You got it. So let me come on the next concept. The next thing the examiner may confuse you in enveloped and non -enveloped. You get, you know, sometimes you get big clinical question, you know, half of page question. You just keep on reading the question. It's a viral infection. Now the examiner will give you a clue. Is it a DNA virus, RNA virus? Is it enveloped or non-enveloped, right? Is it single stranded or double stranded? You have to take up all the clues and compile them and come on the conclusion from the options. You can rule out the option. You can rule in the option. So these all concepts are very important in understanding the hardcore virology. You cannot not understand the hardcore virology without these basic concepts believe me and after this concept start reading the viruses it will be fun for you let me finish this uh, session i'm going to tell you many important things about individual viruses also okay so okay let me come on the envelope now let me come on the envelope how many viruses i told you not all viruses have envelope so among the six dna viruses three are enveloped and three are non-enveloped and among the 15 three are enveloped and three are non-enveloped okay non-enveloped and among the 15 RNA viruses, 12 are enveloped and only 3 are non-enveloped. So basically non-enveloped are always 3. The non-enveloped, the naked one, the naked one are 3 here also and the naked one are 3 here also. So I am going to give you the mnemonic for the naked one, the naked one. Naked means non-enveloped. Naked means do not have clothes, do not have the envelope, do not have uh, uh, envelope. That is the naked one. Among DNA, pop. The mnemonic is pop. So naked viruses are pop, P-A-P. -P. What are the two P here we will take? Parvo and Papova. We are excluding pox, the third P. There are three P now, you have to exclude pox. Pox is the enveloped one. But the remaining two are non-enveloped. And A is only one A, adeno. So P-A-P. -P. And among the 15 RNA, the mnemonic is P-C-R, P-C-R. The P-C-R is naked. So pop and P-C-R are naked. What is P-C-R? Picorna. There are two P now, Picorna and Paramixo. Paramixo is a bigger one, right? So bigger one, we will respect the bigger one and give the clothes to the bigger one. The smaller one is a baby that can be naked. You can learn like that, right? So Picorna is naked. Here also, the Parvo is naked. 
you see the box is having the clothes because the box is the elder one bigger one the bigger one have the clothes the but the baby are naked now the baby is a small baby it's the naked so here parvo is naked here picorna is naked both the smallest smallest in each category are naked in the exam you will get confused i'm giving you the clues to learn right so calci c is for calci and the three r one is rio so rio pcr so the two things which are naked so pa among the dna is naked and pcr among the rna is naked these are the naked viruses naked means they do not have envelope over them say yes if you got it they do not have envelope over them so these are the naked viruses can you see here the naked viruses okay so see all six dna viruses are shown to you the six families of the dna viruses can you see the six families so among the six what is the mnemonic the mnemonic is double h a triple p among the double h a triple p these three which three p a p pop are naked and the remaining three are having envelope see the diagrams also beautiful diagrams can you see there is an envelope over it can you see there is an envelope over it can you see there is an envelope over it so these are the three viruses hhp they have envelope but the remaining three pop p a p they do not have can you see envelope no i can't see envelope they do not have envelope over it so they have only capsid but they are not envelope say yes if you got it can we go ahead yes never forget pop and pcr pop and pcr are the naked viruses naked one okay among the rna there are 15 rna viruses all 15 are not shown to you on this page you know so only important one are shown to you so among the 15 these 12 are enveloped you can see an envelope beautiful envelope everyone have an envelope here you can read the names only three are naked these three are naked learn these three don't learn the 12 learn the three remaining all are envelope you can learn like that so these three are naked the mnemonic is p c r what is p picorna calci and rio i can't see an envelope around them i can't see an envelope around them say yes if you got it so this is the final classification of viruses in front of you right no one will tell you with this such a simplicity the final classification of viruses the viruses are divided in two categories the dna viruses the rna viruses dna viruses they are six in number and rna viruses they are 15 in number among the six total they are h h a triple p and among the 15 it's a b c d f o r t p h i guess you know the full form among this the three are enveloped the three which are non-enveloped is pop and among this the 12 are enveloped they are in front of you the three which are non-enveloped is pcr so pop and pcr are naked viruses and the remaining one are enveloped now you can yourself imagine how beautifully the examiner can give you simple simple questions on these concepts you got it you got it can we go ahead you will get very very simple question but you can be wrong if you do not know these concepts so let's see the question can you tell me the answer please can you read the question tell me the answer so non-enveloped single stranded rna virus can you tell me a single stranded rna virus so all rna viruses are single stranded only examiner use the single stranded word just to confuse you all rna viruses except rio except rio virus right is a single stranded virus so all rio is not given in the option so all of them are basically single stranded rna only right some of them may be dna i am asking the non enveloped one the non enveloped which of the following is non enveloped among the rna so the mnemonic is pcr you have to apply the mnemonic so p for pcr stands for picorna so i will go with picorna okay r stands for rio not retro you should know the full form there are many p and many r in entire virology knowing full form is more important you got it so correct answer here is a you all are right very good very good the correct answer here is picorna they are asking non enveloped single stranded rna so non enveloped single stranded rna is pcr now see the options among the options you are having you are having picorna in the option so go with picorna other three options are coming somewhere else you can see pox virus is a dna virus it's not a rna it's a dna virus retro and bunya are coming here bunya is here retro is also here but retro and bunya are coming this way in the enveloped one not in non enveloped one so coming on the next question which of the following is the enveloped dna virus can you tell me the mnemonic please what is the mnemonic for enveloped dna the four options are in front of you parvo pepova pox and rhabdo so what are the enveloped dna we know the total dna the total dna is double h a triple p among the double h a triple p the three are enveloped and three are naked okay 
the mnemonic is for naked now don't get confused the mnemonic pop is for naked the remaining so pop is gone the remaining three will come this way hhp so hhp are the three envelope virus they are asking the envelope one so can you tell me which is coming hhp hhp now you have to say no h is coming here right all the p are coming so this p this p what is this p what is this p what is the correct answer here you all are right so the correct answer here will be pox virus so you can see pox is coming here the remaining 2p papova and paro are coming that way so you yourself can see how many confusing p r and simple simple questions of virology are in your pyqs i have covered pyqs of last 5 years of all exams of neat pg inict before that we have aims right and fmg i have covered all the pyqs you know so all the pyqs topic wise i have uh, distributed so topic by topic i am showing the pyqs these are not new questions these are already asked in some of the exam and repeated anyway any time they can be repeated you got it can we go ahead so yes this is the correct answer this i have already told you so i can skip this portion can i skip this portion i taught you the smallest dna the smallest uh, rna the largest dna the largest rna i told you among dna smallest and largest are parvo and pox among rna smallest and largest are picorna and paramexo and overall are same as that of dna overall the overall are same as that of dna you got it we have already discussed this thing we have already discussed this thing yes can we go ahead we will solve some pyqs based on this simple concept can you tell me the answer the question is in front of you can you tell me the virus with the smallest genome what they are asking first understand the question first understand what they are asking the virus with the smallest genome smallest genome means they are not asking dna or rna they are asking overall nothing is written so consider it as a overall overall genome so tell me the answer now which of the following virus is overall smallest so i'm not asking any dna or rna i'm asking the overall smallest uh, virus is it rio is it parvo is it pecorna or is it hiv we know rio and hiv is not the answer you can get confused between the two p right parvo is the smallest dna and picorna is the smallest rna right we know that but they are asking overall so they are asking which is which is more smaller among the two is it parvo or picorna you all are right the correct answer is parvo the correct answer here is parvo so the overall answer is also parvo like the dna so overall smallest and largest virus is same as that of smallest dna and largest uh, dna virus so that is the concept now coming to the next concept one more concept i want to tell you here you know among the rna viruses how many rna viruses i told you i told you total 15 rna viruses you know the mnemonic a b c d for tph among them a b c d for tph one more concept here right okay there are 2c 2f 3r and 2p okay among them i told you all of them are single stranded rna except rio except rio which is having double stranded rna all other are single stranded rna we already got this concept now the next concept all of them have single rna means single stranded in a single strand you know but four of them having segmented rna is segmented in multiple pieces segmented in multiple pieces four of them which four which four the mnemonic is bora the mnemonic is bora bora is in pieces you can learn the mnemonic bora is in pieces multiple pieces multiple pieces b for bunia o for orthomyxo b o right r there are three r na so take again rio rio which is having double stranded uh, rna rio and a is arena b o r a bunia orthomyxo rio and arena so the same thing is written in front of you bora bora and you can see how many pieces in b bunia there are three pieces the rna is divided in three pieces in orthomyxo it is divided in eight pieces in rio it is divided in 12 pieces and in arena it is divided in two two pieces you can see the diagram also can you see this is the diagram of orthomyxo in orthomyxo there are eight pieces can you please count it so this is single stranded rna 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 it is divided in eight pieces it is divided in eight pieces say yes if you got it so these are the basic basic concept now when i will teach you the individual viruses from this family you already know these four are segmented when i teach you influenza 
I will teach you that the segment, the genome is divided in eight pieces. You will say, we know it in the general virology. We have learned it. When I teach you rotavirus, rheovirus, I will tell you they are divided. The genome is divided. RNA is divided in 10 to 12 pieces. You already know it. So many things are covered here only from the individual viruses. You got my point. So these are the four viruses in which the genome is divided in multiple pieces. Never forget the mnemonic is Bora. Bora is divided in pieces. Learn. The Bora is in multiple pieces. You can learn like this also. Bora, it's 3, 8, 10 and 2. How many pieces you can learn? You can learn the sequence. Bora, 3, 8, 10, 2. Uh, sometimes there was a PYQ that ortho mixo in how many pieces? So you have to tell me the answer. Number, it's 8. There is a question on ortho mixo and arena. It's already PYQ. So you have to learn the number also. Either you learn here or when I will teach you individual viruses, you can learn there also. You got it? Can we go ahead? Yes. 3, 8, 10 to 12 and 2. Yes, very good. You have to learn the number. Bora. Bora is the mnemonic. Okay, never forget. Let's see a PYQ. Can you tell me the answer? The question is super duper simple now. Can you tell me segmented genome is found in all except? They are asking except. So all these have segmented. The meaning of the segmented means in pieces. The genome is in pieces except. They are asking except. So is it? Is it influenza? Is it Rio? Is it Bunia? Is it Rabjo? What is the correct answer? Apply the mnemonic. Na. The mnemonic is Bora. Why don't you apply the mnemonic? The mnemonic is Bora. B-O-R-A. Let's apply it. So, B, Bunia is coming here. Okay. R is Rio. It is also coming here. You will see, ma'am, other two are not coming. But actually, orthomixo is the influenza only. You may be knowing. Orthomixo is the family inside which the main virus is the influenza virus. Influenza ABC. You know. So, orthomix is the influenza only, but rhabdo is not coming in this mnemonic. No, Kuldeep, A is not the answer. The answer is D. So, actually, influenza is the orthomix only. You got it? Those who are confusing in A, you got it? So, it's better to do the mistakes here only. So, this is a PYQ. Uh, I guess last to last year only it was a PYQ. So, this is the basics you must know. Can we go ahead? So, the correct answer is rhabdo. The remaining three are coming in the Bora. You can see orthomix is the influenza only. Orthomix is the influenza only. Can we go ahead? Are you people there? So the next thing you must learn is the paplomer. You will say, ma'am, what is paplomer? What is paplomer? Paplomer are the spiky projections present on some viruses. It is not present on, uh, on all viruses. So some viruses have paplomer, some do not have. Here the paplomer is present and here the paplomer is absent. You can see here it is absent. So what are paplomer? These are spiky projections. Am I right? These are spiky projections. How many types of paplomers are there? There are two types of paplomer. H and N. Actually, HA and NA. Right? So, what are the two types? Hemagglutinin, known as HA type. And neuraminidase, known as NA type. These are the two types. You will say, ma'am, what is the meaning of these? Paplomer are the spiky projections. We got it. Some viruses have it, some do not have it. It is not compulsory. So, which viruses have it? Can you name those viruses? Okay. So, it is of two types. What is the difference between the two? What is hemagglutinin and what is neuraminidase? You get many questions, the basic questions on the paplomers also. So first thing you have to understand the paplomers are the spiky projections. They are spiky projections present on the surface of the virus. Sometimes they are present, sometimes they are absent. There are two types, HA and NA. You know, HN you can say, HN, right? And uh, so H is also of multiple type and N is also of multiple type. Okay, so what is H? Split the term and you will get the answer. Split the term, H. What is the full form? Heme agglutinin. Heme agglutinin. What do you mean by heme? Heme means blood. Blood means RBC. So these are the spiky projections present on the surface of the virus which agglutinate RBC. The name itself saying its meaning. You just have to split it. If you split it, you will get the answer. You know, you have to be vigilant. You have to open your eyes and mind every time. Even if you don't know the answer, you can crack it. If you know the basics, you know. So heme agglutinin. It is the RBC agglutinin. It is the paplomer, it is a spiky projection on the virus which can agglutinate RBC. It is having receptor for RBC. Right, what do you mean by that? Okay, see. Can you see a virus here? See, this is a virus. See, few viruses are drawn here. Everyone see here. And it is having a hemagglutinin paplomer on it. Can you see the spiky projection? These are hemagglutinin projections. Right, now if you mix them with RBC, can you see here RBCs? RBCs are far from each other. They are far from each other. But if you are mixing the two, if you are mixing the two, so you can see it here. 
the papillomer are binding on the surface of the rbc and multiple surface of the rbc they are coming together and this is known as agglutination the rbc will agglutinate with each other have you done blood grouping in your lab any time in your second prof it was a practical in pathology i guess everyone have performed blood grouping so in blood grouping you take a slide on slide you take one drop of uh, blood one drop of antisera you mix it and you will see the agglutination the same agglutination you will get here you will say ma'am what is the utility of this we got it it is causing agglutination of rbc so rbc are showing dot 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 agglutination okay we got it but what is the utility of this how we are utilizing this property of the viruses we can utilize okay so how many viruses have this there are only five viruses i will tell you the name of the five viruses which have hemagglutinin papilloma on it right i will tell you the name of the five viruses okay one of them is influenza just suppose i am having a sample of virus this is my specimen this is my sample right it can be it can be csf it can be blood it can be urine it can be stool it can be anything and i am suspecting one of the virus inside it i'm suspecting i'm a doctor this is the specimen of my patient and i'm suspecting one of the virus having hemagglutinin papilloma on it i'm suspecting it is present so how i can get confirm it how i can confirm it so just suppose now there are two possibilities the virus with hemagglutinin present or it can be absent in that specimen it uh, if i am right it is present if i am wrong it is absent so there is very simple way to confirm it just take a slide take a slide okay on this slide you take one drop of your specimen like this and you mix it with one drop of rbc whole rbc you mix it with one drop of rbc with a stirrer if you mixing and seeing the agglutination here the diagnosis is confirmed the results can be declared in just 5 minutes in just 5 minutes the agglutination like blood grouping only you can see the result it is as simple as possible you got my point so you can see this is the utility of this test this is known as hemagglutination test so i will tell you the name of the five viruses which is having hemagglutinin papilloma on it you got it you got the utility if you got it say yes in the comment box please say yes you got the utility so this is a test we are performing so we are taking the viral suspension this is my specimen and i am mixing it with one drop of rbc one drop of rbc one drop of suspension one drop of rbc i am mixing it if the if this specimen contain the virus with a hemagglutinin papilloma on it on mixing with a stirrer i can see agglutination is positive and it is visible with the naked eye no use of microscope it is visible by the naked eye so i am getting answers only for from two three uh, students what about others you got it or you didn't got it this is the principle of hemagglutination so these are the five viruses in which hemagglutinin is present what is the mnemonic now it's a mango season right and i love mango oh so it's ripe mango ripe mango you know the mnemonic is r i p e ripe mango r stands for rio virus i stands for influenza that is orthomyxo you can say orthomyxo or you can say either say rope mango or say ripe mango whatever you want o is orthomyxo and i is influenza one and the same thing right p is para influenza p is para influenza so influenza para influenza e is enterovirus which is one of the picorna in the picorna family enteroviruses are there and mango m is mumps mango m is mumps right so these are the five viruses in which hemagglutinin is present this papilloma is present so the diagram of these five is like this all these five viruses they are like this this is a virus and they have hemagglutinin papilloma on their surface they five they all five so all any one of them if mixed with rbc i'm sorry if they are mixed with rbc they cause agglutination of the rbc all five they are agglutinating the rbc right i guess you got it and the second one is the neuraminidase i told you na there are two types there are two types of papilloma one i told you hemagglutinin what about the other the other one is the neuraminidase now it is also okay it is also present on the surface of the virus like this like hemagglutinin only this time this is not hemagglutinin this is neuraminidase i will tell you only two one or two viruses have this i will tell you the names so this is neuraminidase okay only one virus have it neuraminidase so what it is doing so in short it is the opposite of uh, hemagglutinin you will say ma'am what do you mean by opposite of hemagglutinin what hemagglutinin was doing with the rbc this is the rbc hemagglutinin on the surface of the rbc few receptors are present okay few receptors are present so hemagglutinin was binding with that receptor and causing the agglutination yes we have seen that neuraminidase is doing the opposite neuraminidase is destroying it is destroying the receptor it is not binding with that receptor it is destroying the receptor so that here hemagglutination uh, hemagglutination will become reverse 
तो रिवर्सल ऑफ हीमेग्लूटिनेशन विल बी कॉज बाय न्यूरामिनिडेज से यस इफ यू गॉट इट यू गॉट इट सो व्हाट व्हाट हीमेग्लूटिनिन वाज डूइंग इट इज बाइंडिंग विद द रिसेप्टर ऑन आरबीसी सो इट इज कॉजिंग एग्लूटिनेशन ऑफ आरबीसी व्हाट न्यूरामिनिडेज इज डूइंग न्यूरामिनिडेज इज डिस्ट्रॉइंग द रिसेप्टर for rbc on rbc so there is no agglutination it is the reversal of agglutination it is doing so the reversal of agglutination is known as illusion what it is known as illusion so basically neuraminidase is causing illusion you got it say yes if you got it so there is any confusion you can ask so the second type of papillomar is neuraminidase it is receptor destroying it destroy the receptor present on the rbc it destroy so it is causing reversal reversal of agglutination reversal of agglutination which is known as illusion so which virus have it only one virus myxovirus that's it only myxovirus have it only myxovirus there we are having five viruses the right mango here we are having only one virus so what is the summary what is the summary of papillomar can you please tell me the summary of papillomar just a second why it's not working okay ah okay what is the summary of papillomar we have learned there are two type of papillomar hemagglutinin and neuraminidase what is happening i don't know okay just a second give me a minute okay so there are two types of papillomas let me try again there are two types of papillomars hemagglutinin and neuraminidase so basically hemagglutinin is responsible for agglutination of rbc and neuraminidase is responsible for reversal of agglutination of rbc which is known as illusion right uh, hemagglutinin is present in five viruses the mnemonic is ripe mango and neuraminidase is present in only one virus the mnemonic is there is no mnemonic it's myxovirus say yes if you got it this is the summary so finally you have to learn that set this you have to learn this that set can we go ahead can you solve some pyqs based on it this is the pyq so hemagglutination is done by all the viruses except it's a pyq so can you apply your mnemonic what is the mnemonic the mnemonic is ripe mango it's r i p e ripe mango so what is not coming in this mnemonic can you please tell me the answer can you please tell me the answer please so what is r what is r what is i i is influenza definitely coming here definitely coming here they are asking the except so except is hpv you know measles and rubella you may be thinking where it is coming so measles and rubella both are coming in para influenza virus so para influenza is a family inside which many viruses are coming so para influenza includes rub rubella also and measles also and influenza is coming here but there is no hpv there is no hpv very good very good you all are right and uh, some students are writing fantastically the concepts very good and proud of you so can we go ahead the next question in front of you can you tell me property of illusion is found in which virus only one virus show property of illusion name it name it it's a repeated pyq the first thing students even don't know what is illusion illusion is reversal of heme agglutination it is shown only by one virus the receptor destroying enzyme so what is that virus is it myxovirus is it toga virus is it parvovirus or adenovirus what is it yes the correct answer here is myxovirus very good very good er is ne very good shreya you all are right very good the correct answer is myxovirus so myxovirus so these are the you know repeated questions asked in your exam before going to the next topic let me tell you something you know i i have seen many students they repeatedly ask me a query ma'am we study for 12 hours in a day or 14 hours in a day right but you know the results are not very good the marks are not very satisfactory we are not able to perform very well in your in our gts or in your you know mock test and all so this is the frequently most frequent question i get in the queries you know so let me tell you something what is the reason behind it what is the reason you may be one of the student which may feel like this you are studying a, a, a lot you are doing a lots of hard work you are giving your efforts mainly you are giving your time but at the end the result is not good you know at the end what matters is rank right whether you study you don't study what is your rank that matters right so you have to be you don't you have to be productive at the end of the day you don't have to be busy you got my point now what you are doing now you are sitting for 12 hours you are sitting for 14 hours you keep on reading you keep on studying but your concentration is not there you are thinking this that or you are using your you know digital platforms so you are studying a paragraph or page again using there is a message there is a notification like that so concentration is not there you are giving your time but not with full dedication not with, with full concentration so you are busy but you are not productive so at the end of the day what is your output what you are retaining whatever you are studying today will you be able to retain it for the next 5 years or till your exams 
in the first year you study anatomy right you study physiology biochemistry and after five years there is an exam to assess it so whatever you are studying today will you be able to retain it for the next three four two five years whatever so it is that way concentration you have to understand the concept if you do the rectification you will just forget it if you understand it in depth now you will never forget it i have read all these things you know in microbiology whatever i am teaching you when i was in second prof i was in second prof in 2005 by the way in 2005 i was on second prof right so yeah you people are much much younger than me and till date you know you can see how many years have passed and till date i can understand the concepts i have never forget it you know i have understand it in depth you got it so you have to be productive so while studying the moral of telling this is that while studying you have to study with full dedication so switch off all your social media platforms stay away of it if you are studying only you should have a uh, you know phone with you if there is some emergency you should get a notification for that emergency otherwise everything can be avoided there is nothing which cannot be avoided there is a friend calling for a tea for a coffee it can be avoided there is a friend who is calling or someone the some relative is calling just to have fun just to have a walk it can be avoided you know it's not an emergency but there is a friend who is calling you oh, my home is at fire please help me it's an emergency of course you have to run so you have to decide which call has to be picked up which calls have to be avoided at this stage because at this stage you are at crucial stage of your life of course maybe you are in some prof and preparing for your prof exam right maybe you are preparing for your competitive exam and you know struggling for the rank your rank will decide your future you have 19 options if you are doing mbbs you have 19 19 different careers you know so the 19 branches of course right and each branch you can take from multiple colleges multiple institutes right so you know the ultimate thing you will be a dermatologist radiologist orthopedician surgeon it will depend on your rank the first thing is your choice the second thing is your rank right so you know if you rank one now all 19 options are open but if you are ranked 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, all options are not open. You will have limited option. You know, you will have options of 1, 2, 3, 4 branches. Then you have to do compromise. I do not want to do compromise in my career, in my entire life. I do not want to compromise. No one want, likes compromise. Now, we want choice, not compromise. Right? So, it's a small motivation. You know, at this stage, you learn to say no. You know? Sometimes you have to be very hard. You know, some friend is asking for a tea, but you are studying a topic. You do not want a tea break. So just say, no, I do not want a tea break right now. You can go ahead. I do not want it. I've seen students just, yeah, yeah, okay. Whether they want break or not, they just go ahead. Maybe it, it may be true for you also, right? So just learn to say no. If someone is feeling bad, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay if you hurt someone. If it is not an emergency, you should not take that call. That is my point. You are at a crucial stage. Don't waste your time. Your time is very important, even important than me and all educators. Your time is important. So don't even waste even a single minute. If you are wasting it, you are, you know, uh, you are going, you can see if you are wasting even a single minute, you are going behind 100 ranks. If you have studied that minute, you may be ahead of 100 ranks. You can think like that. You got my point. Anyways, bahut hua motivation, aage chalte hain. So coming to the next topic. Am I right? Is this happens with you also? You also waste time when some friend come and ask for the tea. So whether you require tea break or not, you just go ahead for roaring here and there. So don't do that. Learn to say no. It's okay if we can say no to uh, some people sometimes. It's okay. You cannot be kind every, uh, to everyone every time. You cannot do so. Because you don't have enough time. You got it? Say yeah. You got it? Can we go ahead? Okay. Yes, you have to be self-centered. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Okay. So let's go ahead. The next thing which I want to tell you is the symmetry of the viruses. How many type of symmetry the viruses have? The viruses have any one of the three symmetry. There are three options in the symmetry. The one is icosahedral symmetry. The second is the helical symmetry. And the third is the complex symmetry. There are three symmetries. Icosahedral, helical, complex. In icosahedral symmetry, there are equilateral triangles. Can you see? Can you see? These all are. So there are total 12 equilateral triangles overall and it is looking like a diamond you know this is known as icosahedral symmetry multiple equilateral triangles are there the helical is like a spiral you know a spiral it's like a spiral can you see the shape it's like a spiral and complex don't have any fixed shape it can be anything it can be any shape it's complex there is no fixed shape the icosahedral is fixed the helical is fixed but complex is not fixed now i told you six families in the dna viruses and 15 families in the RNA viruses. You tell me which DNA have which of the symmetry, which RNA have which of the symmetry. Can I simplify it? Can I simplify? Okay, give me a minute. So among the six DNA viruses, 
all the DNA viruses are icosahedral, the five of them, except pox virus. Pox virus is complex. Pox virus is a DNA virus. The sixth one, it is complex. Remaining all DNA viruses, the all DNA viruses, five of them are icosahedral. Is it good? Can we go ahead? Can we go ahead? Right? Now, among the 15, I told you, among the 15, 12 are enveloped, but the three are non-enveloped. The three are naked. Which are naked? Can you please tell me? PCR. PCR is naked. Okay. Now, we have given five here and one here. So, helical ko bura lag gaya. Learn like that. Learn, learn like a story. Helical ko bura lag gaya ki mujhe to ek bhi DNA virus nahi mila. Aisa thodi hota hai. Mujhe bhi thoda do. To RNA me se 12 viruses we will give to helical. The 12 enveloped. The 12 enveloped RNA viruses will come under helical. The remaining three. What are the remaining three? PCR. The PCR will come here. The remaining three PCR. The non-enveloped naked will come in icosahedral. None of the RNA viruses complex. And none of the DNA viruses helical. Am I right? What I have said? So this, I have said this. See, it's written in front of you. Okay, I'm sorry. All DNA viruses are icosahedral. The five of them. Except pox virus, the fifth one, or uh, the sixth one, except pox, which is complex. And none of the DNA viruses is helical. Helical is not in this. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. Panch icosahedral and one complex. Hai. The five of them are I icosahedral and one of them is complex. Yes? Can we go ahead? What about RNA? Among the RNA, the 12, the 12 enveloped are the helical. And the three non enveloped, that is PCR, are icosahedral. Do you have any doubt in that? Can I continue? You get questions on the symmetry also. Okay. So, can we mark the symmetry here? So, you can see the 6 DNA. You can see the 15 RNA. Can you help me in marking? So, please mark all the DNA, whether enveloped or non-enveloped. They all are icosahedral, except pox, which is complex. Am I right? I guess I am done with DNA. Let me come on RNA. Let me come on RNA. Among RNA, all enveloped one, the 12 enveloped one are helical. They all are, all are helical. And the PCR, non-enveloped, are icosahedral. Am I right? Am I right? So, icosahedral have 5 DNA and 3 RNA. You got it? Say yes if you got it. Can we go ahead? Give me a thumbs up. Indicate that you got it. This is regarding symmetry. So, you can mark symmetry in the classification itself. So, in the classification itself, we have learned many things. We have learned the symmetry. We have learned enveloped, non-enveloped. We have seen which of them are DNA, which of them are RNA. We have seen all DNA viruses are double-stranded. Except Parvo, which is single-stranded. We have seen all RNA viruses are single-stranded. Except Rio, which is double-stranded. Right. Among the RNA, we can mark Bora. We can mark, if you wish, we can mark it. B, O, R. R is Rio. This one. And A. Where is A? This one. B, O, R, A. We can see. So, we can mark Bora also. That is segmented RNA. So, base, my point is that take one big paper, the double paper, the sheet, write this classification in front of you in your paper. Right. And all the information which I have given you from the beginning of the session, you write that in classification only. So, learn the DNA, learn the RNA, learn which are enveloped, which are non-enveloped, which are enveloped, which are. So, learn the symmetry also. And here only you can write which is smallest, which is largest. Here only you can write which is smallest, which is largest. Right. So, all the information you can write here in this one classification. So, before going to your exam, you have to read this paper, this classification. That's it. You got it. You will get 80% of virology in this classification only. Believe me. So, you have to write it compactly. Write all the information here only. Try it out. At least try. If I am saying there, there is worth now. It is, some, it, is having, it is having some weightage. Right. So, if I am saying it. Okay. So, let's solve some question based on the symmetry. Can you tell me the answer, please? Let me see who is first. Tell me the answer. Which of the following virus do not have icosahedral symmetry? Do not have. Do not have icosahedral symmetry. Parvo, Papova, Pox and Adeno. The four options are in front of you. Just now I taught you the symmetry. So see all the four options are from DNA viruses. You can see. Now you know the classification. The things are very easy for you if you know the classification. All of them are DNA. So tell me regarding the DNA viruses, the symmetry. Can you tell me regarding the symmetry, please? What is the correct answer? Very good. Very good. Jitendra is first to answer and remaining all are also right. Very good. The correct answer is pox. So I told you all the five DNA viruses are icosahedral except one. That is pox virus that is having complex. So pox virus is having complex. Remaining all are DNA and that is having icosahedral. So, if you get this question directly and you don't have the orientation regarding the symmetry, you cannot attempt it. You will be wrong in your exam. There are more chances you will be wrong. Okay. So, you have to be crystal clear in your concepts. Coming on the next thing, the shape of the viruses. Every virus have an individual shape, right? But some viruses have very typical shape on which you get one liner question. 
So pox virus is brick shape. Can you see it's brick? It's looking like a brick. It's in front of you, right? You can see the electron microscopy diagram of the pox virus. The rabies virus is bullet shape. You know, it's like bullet, bullet shape. Can you see? Let me show you the bullets. So here there is an electron microscopy diagram showing beautiful bullets, right? It's bullet shape. Never forget. Rabies is bullet shape, right? Pox is brick shape, right? And adenovirus is space vehicle shape. Can you see? It's looking like space vehicle. It is having rod like structure, you know, having a knob on it. So it is having space vehicle. So it's also all three are PYQ. I'm not uh, putting questions now. It will take time. But believe me, all three are PYQs in some of the other exams. But these all are PYQs. Can we go ahead? Can we go ahead? So please learn the three shapes. I'm not telling you uh, this thing, uh, the PYQs. Coming on the next thing, this replication of the virus. You know, there are six steps in the replication of the virus. How does the virus replicate? It is not as simple as binary fission uh, like bacteria. Virus replicate inside the host cell, not outside the host cell. So can you see a yellow color cell in front of you? This yellow color cell which is in front of you, this yellow color cell which is in front of you, it is a host cell. This cell is a host cell. Where is the virus? This is the virus. Can you see? This is the virus here. This is the virus here. Can you see? This is the virus. So the first step, virus attach on the surface of the host cell with the help of receptors. With the help of receptors, it is attaching. It is known as adsorption. It is known as adsorption. Number one. Number two, penetration. In the penetration, can you see? It is like going inside, forming a vesicle. Forming a vesicle in the host cell, it is going inside. Envelope will not go inside. The remaining virus is going inside. Can you see? This is remaining virus go inside. This is known as penetration. After penetration, uncoating. The capsid and the nucleic acid separate from each other. Can you see? All capsid separate, all nucleic acid separate. Capsid, nucleic acid. Capsid, nucleic acid. They separate from each other. The capsid is separate, nucleic acid is separate. So that is uncoating. The virus is doing uncoating inside the host cell. The fourth step is the most important step is the biosynthesis. Now this virus will utilize the machinery. It will, it will utilize the enzymes. It will use, utilize the metabolites of this host cell and replicate. It will form multiple copies of the nucleic acid also. It will form multiple copies of the capsid also. Virus have two things compulsorily, the nucleic acid and the capsid. So one virus is entering and after entering it, the nucleic acid and the capsid separate. Now multiple copies of the nucleic acid and multiple copies of the capsid are formed using the machinery, using the enzymes, using the metabolites, using everything, uh, cellular organization of the host cell only. Virus doesn't have mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, nothing, right? No enzymes. Everything is of the host cell, right? So Saman, Saman pura host cell ka or production kaan kar rai virus. So the, the replication, the production is of virus, but all the machinery which is utilized is of the host cell. That is the thing. So basically the host cell is hijacked by the virus. The virus enter inside the host cell and hijack it. Now host cell cannot perform its own function. It is hijacked. It is hijacked. And the machinery, the metabolites of the host cell is utilized by the virus for replication. So that is the fourth step, biosynthesis. After that maturation, in maturation, uh, again, one nucleic acid, one capsid, they bind with each other. One nucleic acid, one capsid, one nucleus. So again, the complete virus is forming, multiple, multiple virioids are forming in the end release. So the host cell is ruptured. Can you see at the end, the host cell is ruptured and multiple progeny. It is known as progeny of the virus which comes out. So can you tell me the six steps? They are in front of you. Can you tell me the six steps? What are the six steps? The first step is the adsorption. The second step is the penetration. The third is the uncoating. Then biosynthesis you can see. Then maturation, then release. So these are the six steps. Okay, now we'll learn one more thing. Here the virus entering inside. It is entering inside. And here it is exiting. Multiple progenies are exiting. During the entire this duration, virus is invisible inside the host cell. What word I am using? The virus become invisible. The virus is not visible. It is inside the host cell. You cannot find the virus inside the cytoplasm of the host cell. Please understand this thing. So the, you can see the virus at the entry. You can see the progeny at the exit when the, when the host cell is ruptured and progeny is coming out. But in between that, you cannot see the virus. So this phase in which the virus is invisible, it is known as eclipse. Eclipse phase. What it is known as? Say, it is known as eclipse phase. What do you mean by eclipse? Hindi mein kahun to grahan lagna. You know, sun eclipse, moon eclipse, you know, surya grahan. So that thing is invisible. Invisible for that moment. So virus is invisible for this duration. Right? It, so you will ask, ma'am, what is this duration? For how much duration it is required? It can be as small as 15 minutes. It can be as large as 15 hours, 15 days also. 
So there is no fixed time. There is no fixed time. But this time is known as eclipse phase. What is eclipse phase? The duration of time between the entry of the virus inside the host cell till it exits outside the host cell. The virus becomes invisible and that duration is known as eclipse phase. Say yes. You got it. That is eclipse phase. Now you will say ma'am, we can't see the virus inside the host cell. Yes, you cannot see. So virus is synthesizing now. It is replicating inside the host cell. You cannot see the virus. I am clear. It is not, it is, you cannot see the virus. But you can see some dot-like structure. Some dot-like structures in the cytoplasm and the nucleus of the host cell. Where virus is replicating. You cannot see entire virus because it is uncoated now. But you can see some dot-like structure. These dot-like structures are known as inclusion bodies. The biggest, the most important topic for today. Inclusion bodies. Students know the word inclusion body. But I, I wonder if the students know what is inclusion body. If I ask you the definition of inclusion body. What are inclusion body? Inclusion body are the virus which is replicating inside the host cell. So inside the host cell only we can see the inclusion body. Now, inclusion body can be present in the cytoplasm, can be present in the nucleus, can be present in the both of the host cell. So, inclusion body is basically a replicating virus. Say yes if you got it. You got it? So, that is the thing. Okay. Now, we, you, you understand the replication of the virus, the six steps. Let me tell you something. An abnormal replicative cycle. What is the abnormal replicative cycle? What do you mean by abnormal? Uh, can you see this is influenza virus? This is influenza virus. Either you say orthomyxovirus or you say influenza virus one and the same thing. How I recognize I can see the eight segmented eight pieces in the genome. So eight pieces in the genome only one virus have. It can be IBQ also. Okay. It's an orthomyxor influenza virus. Just suppose this influenza virus want to replicate. What it will do? You will say ma'am very simple. It will enter inside a host cell. It will enter inside a host cell. It will replicate. Right. You have told the steps. It's like this. So basically there is a problem. Now, inside the host cell, just a second, inside the host cell, multiple uh, influenza viruses are entering. Multiple, instead of one, ideally one should enter now. Multiple uh, influenza viruses are entering inside one host cell. So, this is one host cell inside which multiple influenza viruses are entering at a time. So, when they all will enter now, so under in short, my Hindi me kahun to bheed bhaad ho jayegi, gar bhaad ho jayegi. So under there is a chaos inside because multiple viruses are entering entering inside one host cell. So all the six steps will be performed one by one. They all will do the adhesion, then they all will do the penetration, then they will do the uncoating, then the, the most important they will do the biosynthesis, then the fifth step they will do the maturation, maturation, and lastly release. So in all the six step, the fifth one, the maturation step will be defective. The maturation step will be de facto because there is too many virus progenies are there in one host cell. So the maturation is defective. Because of the defective maturation, the progeny which is coming out, the progeny which is coming out finally after the rupture, the progeny which is coming out, it is having the paplomas now. Because the original virus have paplomer, the progeny have paplomer. So paplomer is more, the hemagglutinin concentration is more, more as compared to parent, number one, number one. And number two, the infectivity is less. It should be as infective as the parent virus. But in fact, so this virus is an abnormal virus. The virus, the progeny is an abnormal. And the phenomenon is known as von Magnus phenomenon. It's a very important PYQ. So what is von Magnus phenomenon? Can you tell me the things regarding it? What is von Magnus phenomenon? When does it happen? When high doses of influenza virus enter inside the host cell. Multiple influenza virus enter inside one host cell. Number one. What does it happen? Because multiple things are entering, multiple viruses are entering in one host cell, the fifth step will be defective. That is assembly, maturation will be defective. Because of which the progeny which is formed, the progeny which is formed, it is having high hemagglutination but low infectivity. So such a defective progeny is formed. Can you see? These are the paplomas. So paplomas will be more but infectivity is less. Say yes, you got it. So this is von Magnus phenomenon. See a PYQ on it. Can you tell me a PYQ on it please? Von Magnus phenomenon is... What is one Magnus phenomenon? What is the correct answer? Is it abnormal replicative cycle? Is it a virus with low infectivity? Is it a virus with high hemagglutinin? Or all of the above? All of the above. So I guess we all know the correct answer. The correct answer is the D. Yes, all of the above. Yes, all of the above is true. Very good. So correct answer here is D. You all are right. Yes. So the thing. Okay. So after that, just give me a minute. I will tell you one more thing here. I would like to tell you one more thing here. The inclusion bodies. Just a second. Before cultivation, I would like to tell you the inclusion bodies here. Just a second. Okay. Okay. 
So let's come on the inclusion bodies. Where it will do? Okay, here. Okay. So I told you what are inclusion bodies. When a virus is entering inside a host cell, you cannot see the virus. But inside the host cell, you can see the dot-like structures. These dot-like structures do not have any fixed shape, no fixed size, no fixed color. And these are the replicating viruses. These are known as inclusion body. So this is the definition of inclusion bodies. These are the structures of different size, different shape, different location, different color present inside the host cell. They can be seen with light microscope. Normally, viruses cannot be seen with light microscope. The viruses can be seen with electron microscope only. But in light microscope, you cannot see the virus. But you can see dot-like structure which is known as inclusion body. Basically, this is the sites of virus multiplication. You are looking like dot. It is of three types. It can be present in the cytoplasm of the host cell. It can be present in the nucleus of the host cell. It can be present in both the cytoplasm and the nucleus. So let me divide. There are five examples here. There are five, three plus two. Five examples here and there are two examples here. You have to learn all the examples at the tip of your tongue for inclusion body. You always get one question on inclusion body in all exams. It is compulsory. In all the papers, whatever paper you want to see in the PYQ, you can get one question on the inclusion body. It is a very important topic. You cannot skip the examples. You cannot. So let me tell you first five examples of the cytoplasmic. Here you can see. Can you see a cell here? Please see the cell. Inside the cell, see this is the nucleus of the cell. This is the nucleoli present inside the nucleus. Where is the inclusion body? The inclusion body is present the dot-like structure. If you see the pink color dots in the cytoplasm, if you zoom it out, you can see a pink color dot-like structure in the cytoplasm. This is cytoplasmic nucleation, inclusion body. It is present in the cytoplasm of the host cell. It is cytoplasmic inclusion body. So there are five examples you have to learn. Number one, rabies virus. The name of the inclusion body is Negri body. So basically, this is a diagram of Negri body only. So this is a neuron. This cell is neuron. You know, rabies virus in fact the brain in the neurons, right? This is a neuron. And in the cytoplasm of the neuron, basically in the hippocampus, in the neurons, you can see the Negri bodies, right? So rabies virus, Negri body is the first example. The second and third is vaccinia and variola, the two pox viruses. Vaccinia, variola. Variola have passion body and vaccinia have guineri body. Learn the examples, the name of the inclusion body also. Next is Paul pox. It's Bollinger body and uh, Molluscum contagiosum, Henderson, Peterson, also known as HP bodies. So all these are the pox virus. All these are the examples of the pox family. Pox family is a family having these four viruses. So one is rabies and one are the pox. The four are the pox virus. Can you help me in writing the examples again? The five uh, cytoplasmic one. Can we write it if you help? So first write the name of the virus. Rabies, then vaccinia, then variola. Right, then foul pox and the last one is molluscum contagiosum. Now tell me the name of their inclusion bodies please. Rabies have nigri bodies. Vaccinia have guineri bodies. Variola have passion body. Foul pox have Bollinger body. Molluscum contagiosum have Henderson Peterson body. Be crystal clear in your concepts. You got it? You got it? Can we go ahead? Can we go ahead? So this is the five type of the cytoplasmic inclusion body at the tip of your tongue. Learn the name of the virus, learn the name of the inclusion body at the tip of your tongue, right? It should be that important topic. And you can get an IBQ also. It's also a PYQ. In the IBQ, it's a spotter. It's a spotter. It's a typical case of rabies. If it is a neuron, it is mentioned in the question. Neuron, inside the neuron, you are getting a pink color inclusion body in the cytoplasm. It's a typical case of rabies. It's a nigri body. It's a nigri body, especially in the Purkinje cells of the hippocampus okay that is the susceptible area coming on the nuclear intranuclear bodies intranuclear bodies are of two types cowdery a and cowdery b you will say what do you mean by cowdery a cowdery b both of them are present inside the nucleus only but cowdery a is granular in appearance it is granular and cowdery b is circumscribed in appearance it is not granular see see can you see a cell here see the cell okay can you see the nucleus Inside the nucleus, see this body. It is granular. Okay. And can you see this cell here? Okay. Uh, and this is the nucleus inside which this is very circumscribed. Both of them are intranuclear. This one is granular, so cordry type A. This one is non-granular, circumscribed, so cordry B. Both of them are intranuclear. You have to learn two. Cordry A, cordry B. Cordry A, there are three examples. The mnemonic is heavy. H-V-Y. H-V-Y. Heavy, A-H-V-Y, 
एच इज हरपीज वी इज वेरीसेला जोस्टर and why is yellow fever this is the name of the virus now learn the name of the inclusion body right we learn two things na so herpes simplex virus the name of the inclusion body is lipschultz body repeatedly asked and cq okay varicella zoster we don't have any peculiar name here okay and yellow fever it is known as tories body all these are pyq if you don't believe me cross check your pyqs the five years pyqs of any exam all medical entrance exam okay so heavy is the pneumonic and cordry b cordry b In Cordy B, there is only two. The pneumonic is PA, PA PA. You can learn. P is polio, A is adeno. So there is no typical name of inclusion body, but learn the name of virus PA. Coming on the third category, in which both intranuclear as well as intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies both are there. Both. So only two examples are there: measles and CMV. Measles and CMV. Say yes. Say yes. Measles and CMV. In measles, it is known as Warden Pinkedley. Last to last year. Uh, need PG question and last year FMG question. Okay, so Warden's Pinkedley and CMV is owl eye appearance this year. Need PG question. Okay, it's typically owl eye appearance. Why it is known as owl eye? Owl, yani ullu ullu kya? You know why it is? It is both. Can you see? This is a cell. Everyone see here. This is a cell. Inside the cell, can you see here? This is the nucleus. So the inclusion body is present in the nucleus also, and the inclusion body is present in the cytoplasm also. Can you see? So it is looking like a owl. Owl eye. It is looking the eyes of an owl. The owl eye appearance. That's why CMV is owl eye appearance. Say yes. So can we revise it? We can quickly revise it. Can you please tell me five intracytoplasmic inclusion body with the viruses with their name of inclusion bodies? Who will tell me? Can you tell me the cowdery type A and cowdery type B? The three cowdery type A and two cowdery type B intranuclear inclusion bodies, please, with their names. And can you tell me only two? Both intracytoplasmic and intranuclear, both inclusion bodies. Who will tell me? Please try it out with me. Please say now. Please try. At least try. Okay. So can we try intracytoplasmic? What are the names of the viruses here? The first virus here is rabies. The second is variola, variola, vaccinia. Okay, vaccinia. This one is rabies, variola, vaccinia. The remaining one are uh, foul pox and. Molluscum contagiosum. Now we will write the name of the inclusion bodies. In rabies, it's known as nigri bodies. In nigri bodies. In variola, it's known as pastian bodies. In vaccinia, it's known as guineri bodies. In foul pox, it's known as bollinger bodies. In molluscum contagiosum, it's known as Henderson Peterson. The more you say, the more you learn. Believe me, the more you say. Even you are alone, say it loudly. Say it loudly in a room, right? When you say it now, it will fix in your permanent memory. Believe me, right? It will take the same time. Okay. So intranuclear inclusion body, cowdery type A are granular in appearance, and cowdery type B are circumferential in appearance. But they both are intranuclear. So the three cowdery type in the pneumonic is heavy, and the two cowdery type B is pa. So you can learn heavy pa, heavy pa, right? It's herpes. Okay. It's varicella zoster virus and yellow fever. Okay, and in pa it's polio and adeno. What is the name? What is the name in herpes? It's known as Lipschultz body. In yellow fever, it's known as Tories body. Others don't have any peculiar name. Coming on the third and the last category, only two viruses are there, which is having both. So the viruses are measles and cytomegalovirus. In measles, it's known as Warden Warden Pinkedley body, and cytomegalovirus, it's known as owl eye appearance. Please learn it. Please learn it at the tip of your tongue. You learn it. Yes, very good, very good. You all are right. Can we solve some PYQs based on inclusion body? Every year there is a question. Believe me. So the first question is in front of you. Can you tell me appearance of cautery type A inclusion body is? Is it granular? Is it circumscribed? Is it seen in polio or none? Which of the following is correct for cautery type A? Cautery type A is seen in three three viruses. The pneumonic is heavy, heavy, and cautery type B is. Seen in two viruses, the pneumonic is pa. Okay, so they are asking the question on cowdery type A. So yes, cowdery type A is granular. Very good, very good. Iashini, very good. The correct answer here is granular. Okay, uh, the cowdery type B is circumscribed and it is seen in polio. The remaining two options are for cowdery B. So correct answer here is A and very good. So only few students are participating. Please, everyone, write the correct answer. Yes, cowdery type A is granular. And cowdery type B is circumscribed and seen in polio. So the remaining two options are for B, right? So correct answer here is A. The next question is in front of you. Both intranuclear, intracytoplasmic inclusion body seen in which viruses? I told you the name of only two viruses which have both. 
the intracytoplasmic as well as intranuclear. Yes. So what is the correct answer? Is it pox virus? Is it herpes virus? Is it measles virus or is it mumps? What is the correct answer? Can you please tell me the correct answer? I am waiting for it. Yes, yes. You all are correct. So the two viruses are measles and CMV. Measles is given here. And what is the name of inclusion body? Absolutely right. What is the name of inclusion body here? The name of the inclusion body is Varden Pinkidley inclusion body. Right. Uh, one year the PYQ is on Varden Pinkidley also. You must know everything about it. So the correct answer here is measles. Right. You can see both are seen in measles and CMV. In measles it is known as Varden Pinkidley. Okay. So the correct answer here is measles. You all are right. The next question is in front of you. Lipschul's body are seen in. Lipschul's body. They are seen in. Hodgkin's disease, viral hepatitis, herpes or influenza. So I told you the name of a, uh, this inclusion body. In every virus I told you the inclusion body name also. So Lipschul body is given to which? So among which of the following inclusion bodies are seen? I guess inclusion body among them are seen only in one herpes virus. And in herpes it is the Lipschul. I told you three in cautery type a heavy HVY. Heavy ka H is herpes and that is known as Lipschul's. You all are right. Very good. So herpes simplex virus, it's known as Lipschul's body. Very good. The next question is in front of you. The next question, yes, you all are right. Very good. Bollinger bodies are seen in. Is it seen in chicken pox, cow pox, small pox or fowl pox? In which of them Bollinger bodies are seen? Very easy question. So Bollinger body is one of the intracytoplasmic inclusion body. I told you five intracytoplasmic inclusion body. One is rabies and the remaining one are the pox viruses. So which of the following pox virus, the name of the inclusion body is Bollinger. Everyone is correct. The correct answer is foul pox. Very good. Very good. The correct answer here is the foul pox. You can see Bollinger bodies are seen in foul pox. On each of the example already PYQ exists. And it is a high probability you get a question on inclusion body. Either a direct question or one of the clue in your big clinical question. You can get in the form of the clue also. There is a virus having inclusion body. So you should rule out all the options others which do not have inclusion body. Okay. So the next question is in front of you. Caudry type A inclusion body is seen in. Caudry type A inclusion body is seen in. Which virus? Is it seen in uh, hepatitis B virus, herpes virus, adenovirus or pox virus? So tell me caudry type A mnemonic first. What is the mnemonic of caudry type A? The mnemonic is heavy. H O V Y. What is the full form? H is herpes, V is varicella zoster and Y is yellow fever. So among the three, I can see only herpes here. Very good. I can see only herpes here. Very good. So you all are correct. The correct answer here is herpes. Yes. The correct answer here is herpes. Caudry type A, it is seen in herpes. So you get many questions from the general virology. So today I taught you a big chunk of general virology. Is it? Is it? So I guess I am done here. I will continue the session, the virology ahead. Now I will teach you individual viruses. I will take one more session of virology, the decode virology, the general virology, the basics you got. Now understanding individual viruses is a fun for you. Among the DNA viruses, all six families are important. Among the all six families in DNA viruses, the most important which we have to study in detail is the pox virus number one. We will start with pox virus. Adeno, parvo, they are very small, right? Adeno, parvo, they are small. Herpes we have to see in detail the eight types of herpes. These are important DNA. DNA is very small. Among the RNA 15, I will not teach you all 15. I will teach you five important RNA. The one I will teach you is rabies. One is HIV. One is influenza. In uh, paramyxo, the few important we will see. And uh, one more important, the coronavirus, of, of course. And uh, one more HIV I have said. So five or six important viruses we will see in RNA. So five, six in DNA, mainly two in DNA, the big one. The rest are small and the five big in RNA. It will take one more session. So we will see the individual important diseases and the pathogenesis of each viruses. That's it. You got my point. The basics, you got it. Now, believe me, many questions will be from basics only. But we have to see the individual viruses also. If you like the session, let me know if you want more session on virology. You want session on individual viruses. So I will plan only one session. It will be a marathon. It will be a three hour marathon. In three hour marathon, in the first hour, I will complete DNA viruses. In the remaining two hours, I will complete the important five or six RNA viruses. In this way, complete virology will be done. This is general and the uh, systemic virology will be done in this way. Kindly let me know if you want the session, write down in the comment box. We can plan it ahead. 
We are always here to help you out. Now, there is an important announcement for you people, right? On 2nd of April, we are launching Saribilam app. So, the ultimate app for medical PG preparation, believe me. If you are preparing for your NEET PG, FMG, INICT, USMLE, any medical entrance exam or for your prof exam, the app is just perfect or more than perfect for you. Believe my words. Believe. If you trust me, believe my words, the app is perfect, right? So, all the 19 subjects are just superb, right? And if you are taking that app and watching all the lectures judiciously, seeing the notes and understanding the concepts, you are in top 100. Believe me, all the important topics, the probable topics, the PYQs, the most important questions, the topics, everything is covered of all 19 subjects. So, just try it out. The app is launching on the 2nd of April and, uh, you know, we are just giving the final touches and uh, that, you know we are eagerly waiting for the launch of the app and we can't wait to share it with you okay so with this announcement let me end this session and on ending let me just quote a few motivational lines again for you you know you have to be out to be number one of course you want rank one everyone wants rank one close your eyes just for few seconds and imagine this year rank one is yours your name is written everywhere everywhere on all social media platform everywhere you are rank one believe that day just imagine that day you are rank one your name is written everywhere rank one rank one rank one everyone is so curious to take interviews with you you don't have time even to give interviews with everyone imagine that day yes that can be your day you can be number one but for that you have to be odd you will say ma'am what is odd about it what i should have odd so that i can be number one you should be odd that you should push harder every day a little bit extra than yesterday you know so today you have studied for six hours seven hours so the next day your target it should be at least 15 20 minutes more at least half an hour more you should push every day a little bit harder right you should sacrifice you should you should be doing sacrifices willingly happily right you are not roaming here and there for an year you're not watching movies you are not uh, wasting your time on the netflix and all you are not using multiple you know social media platforms you're not doing chit chat and that's all but that is only for a year or two maximum one or two year after that life is smooth right you have to do sacrifices for one or two year you have to be odd you have don't have to be ordinary if you will be ordinary your rank will be ordinary if you want to be number one you have to be you know different from others you have to be odd so that's a, a small motivation for you and uh, I guess see you again. I want to see you again and we'll schedule more sessions for you. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Wishing you all the best for your exams. Bye-bye.